This was a playground. A dark and epic subterranean chasm stretched farther than the eye could see with a mile-high ceiling. The unicorn mare Sparkle had no problems with the lack of light in the great chasm. Without a regard to the rules beset by her tribe, or rather the chieftain, she fired into the air from her horn magic flares to illuminate the precariously narrow pathways to the many alcoves and ledges of the chasm. Happily, she hummed when she trotted out of the cavern entrance and down to the lower levels, hoping to find any new treasure that might have washed up below in the murky shores of the chasm's polluted river. Sparkle, come back! Turning her head, Sparkle saw Trixie cowardly peering over the edge of a crystal rock platform. Obviously, the chieftain had again reminded Trixie to watch over her only daughter, but nothing would stop the purple unicorn from sating her curiosity of the world that lied across the great chasm. Sparkle allowed Trixie to follow after her, bless her loyal heart. To the pair of unicorns, the danger of the chasms were nothing compared to the punishment the chieftain would impose onto them. Sparkle, please, this is the sixth time already. Then seventh time is a charm, smiled Sparkle. After the tremor from yesterday, I'm sure we'll find some awesome technology on the bottom. Oh, what is it with you and technology? Why can't you be satisfied with just magic? There's more to this world than our home and magic. Remember that miniature pony automaton I brought to the village? Who could forget? It nearly burned a house down, that accursed thing. Your mother, I mean the chieftain, was furious. After that punishment, you're still coming down here and picking up junk? They're not junk, Trixie. We don't much about the surface world, and this is the only way we can ever know. Sparkle, what is there to know about the surface? It's full of racist Earthians who are always at war against the Pegasi. The treasures at war down here aren't all that bad, if you put it to good use. Shh, I hear something. Trixie flinched as Sparkle fired another magic flare from her horn. Surely, by now, a monstrous abomination lurking in the chasm would have been aroused by Sparkle's magic. Gruesome stories of giant serpents, ravenous mutant crocodiles and hydras preying on unicorns, and in rare cases devouring them, had been told throughout their village. Yet the beast's dreaded reputation paled in comparison to the vicious Irvians that were said to have come from the other side of the chasm. Then again, the reputation of earth ponies only makes Sparkle's curiosity grow, st grow stronger. Without magic, how did they become the dominant race of the foot surface world? Below, a curious transport rubbed against the rocks of the rapid and murky river waters of the chasm. It appeared alive, if not enchanted, but Sparkle knew that the wheelless hover truck was powered by non-magical means. If she could get down, she could discern whatever its main power source was the combustion engine, batteries or fuel cells. Regardless, Sparkle was excited to have a working hover truck. I knew something fell there. Trixie, help me put up it towards the cave. Pardon me if I lack any interest in your technological pursuits, but why in heaven would you need an enchanted slab of metal? First off, it's not enchanted. Second, it's called a hover truck. Third, we can use it move around rocks and other heavy items for our village. Why do we need these things when we have magic? We can't always use magic for everything, Trixie. After all, you were the first to pass out during the advanced level magic test we had last week. I still say that bowl of sand was enchanted, but I don't see how that has to do with anything. Never mind about that. The truck is getting away. Now let's start casting. We can't. Why not? The thing might have enchantments that will react to our spells. For the last time, it's not enchanted. But this is from the other side, isn't it? You heard about the Earthians and their weapons, haven't you? Of course I have. Look, I really don't want to waste the power that's left in this thing. We need to use our powers to lift it up. I don't want to. Besides, if you like it so much, why don't you use your precious technology to fly this back up to the entrance? Fine. Sparkle probably asked too much of a friend anyway. 
and despite being forbidden to venture into the great chasm yet again, she would be partly to blame if Trixie were to be heard in the process of lifting the hover truck from its stuck position. Cautiously, the purple unicorn lowered herself until she could tap the operational hover truck with a rear hoof. There was some resistance, thus ensuring confidence that she would be able to drive this thing back to her own personal cave to be nestled along with many other technological trinkets she collected throughout her life. She settled her haunches on the driver's seat and pressing the pedal to hear the spinning roar of the engines made her smile with glee. Sparkle really wanted to take a joyride in the hover truck, but Frixie's worried and watchful glance made her reconsider. This truck was too new. The fuel level was still more hard than full. How did it end up here? From her basic understanding of machine controls she learned through old Irvian manuals, Sparkle managed to pull the truck off the edge. The hovering boosters rumbled low, but none of the vibration had transferred to Sparkle's cabin. To float without magic was an enjoyable experience. Then she shifted the gear into ascent drive and pressed her front hooves on the steering wheel. Just then, she spotted a body clad in a dark brown duster coat and a Stetson head floating by the, by the chasm shore. Sparkle had seen bodies wash up like this, but the bodies alre had already been decomposed after days of floating in the murky river waters. Often, most of these dead Erdians had the look of a common criminals, as if they deserved the fate to be lost in the chasm. She had gotten used to such morbid sights, and when she sh would spot one, she muttered a short prayer to the sun and the moon, and a few times compelled Trixie to join her. But if the hover truck was new, what of this body? The curious unicorn inched her very closer so that she could get a better look. Hurry up, ah, Trixie cried. There are mimic sirens lurking in this area. I saw a body. Forget pr about praying for it. I don't want to be eaten by a river monster or worse, be punished by the chieftain. I feel the pony is alive. Once she was close, Sparkle leaped off her hover truck and magic the rope to tie it down to stable rock. Then she used the same magic to telekinetically lift the pony's body out from the water so she could feel it with her hooves. The body was still warm. Buckle immediately flipped the pony over and saw a rather pretty and freckled orange mare with a blonde mane wearing a blue neck scarf that covered the golden neck. One, two, three, pumps to the chest and thus Sparkle applied CPR to the mare. One, two, three. She applied her lips into the orange pony's mouth to give her a deep breath of life. The process went on and finally the orange pony coughed, hurling out the gross water from her lungs and stomach. Orange pony barely opened her green eyes after she sat up, widening them as she stared hard and in shock at her unintended savior. Sparkle did not notice or care to notice that the pony she saved was one of them an Irvian. Sparkle, cried Trixie, get away from that pony. Trixie had suddenly teleported before her friend with her charged horn poised at the resuscitated victim. Then at the same time, the orange pony suddenly backflipped behind Sparkle and poised the sharpened edge of a long katana blade against her neck. Wow.